Joey Barrow trying to put the Indians on top here. Bases full, one out, 1-1 one, one pitch. Joey swings and hits a deep drive to left field. It is gone! Fly ball right field. Corey Steiner coming on. He is there. He is waiting. This game is over. Doug Jones has done it again. High drive, deep right center field. Chasing back Devereaux. Way back at the fence. It's gone! A home run! The game is over! Wendell is ready. Here's the one-two pitch. Strike three called over the inside corner. Greg Swindell has pitched a one-to-nothing shutout. The 1989 Cleveland Indians baseball season was a roller coaster campaign that had as many heartaches as smiles. A season full of peaks and valleys. A season where you, our most cherished fan, experienced perhaps the most frustrating summer of baseball on the lakefront in many, many years. You were not alone in that frustration. The Cleveland Indians players, to a man, felt the same frustration and disappointment. Over the next 10 minutes, you will hear from the players on their thoughts about the 1989 season, what they look for in 1990, and what they feel about you, the cornerstone of our fan support. Without question, the 1989 season saw the maturation of a young quality pitching staff. Not since the days of Louis Tiant and Sam McDowell in the 60s have the Indians been able to boast a blue ribbon pitching stand. Pride first baseman Pete O'Brien talks about the pitches. Well, I'd have to say that uh, really the, the highlights of the year were, was the pitching staff. And, uh, and I think that any time that a, a ball club needs to build and, and uh, look toward a championship, I think they have to start on the mound. And I think 1989, the pitching staff of the, the Cleveland Indians ranked uh, if, if not one of the best in the American League, well, I'm certain one of the best in the American League, and if not in all of baseball. So uh, that's a very good, bright uh, starting spot for a team that's uh, ready to, to challenge. 13-game winner Tom Candiotti not only likes the development of the 1989 staff, but likes what he sees in the younger arms. I think the biggest highlight I've seen in the 1989 season was the uh, development of our pitching staff. Uh, you know, with uh, Greg Swindell having another super year until he was hurt. Uh, John Farrell, who's pitched in very bad luck, but's pitched very well. Bud Black, who has my vote to be the comeback player of the year, um, he's pitched fantastic, uh, although he doesn't have a whole lot to show for it either. And uh, hopefully with the emergence of Rod Nichols, uh, we have one of the best starting staffs, I think, in the American League. And uh, that's really something to look forward to in 1990 is... Uh, is, is the foundation of this of this Indian team is, is the pitching staff and the bullpen. Uh, Doug Jones had another great year. Jesse Roscoe's proved that he could be a stopper on a lot of teams. And uh, the nice thing is we got some nice young arms coming up. Uh, Steve Owens done a great job for us, uh, giving us a new look from, from the side and throwing that nasty sinker ball. Tribe strikeout king in 1989, John Farrell. He tips his cap to a pitcher's best friend, his defense. I know uh, it's been a lot of frustration here in 1989, but uh, when you look at our pitching and our defense, uh, I think it's two things that haven't been seen around the Cleveland area in quite some time. And, uh, you know, we rank fourth in the major leagues in, in fielding percentage, and I think that is the most uh, unnoticed aspect of our ball club all year. I think it's the defense hasn't received enough credit. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of negative things brought upon our team this year, which, you know, sometimes is deservedly. But uh, at other times, you really have to, you know, stress the positive points. And that is definitely one of them, uh, the feeling that we've had this year with, uh, you know, the addition of Felix and up the middle and uh, Pete O'Brien, who's done a real good job. And Brad Cummins has shown he can play a real good center field. All-star Greg Swindell echoes the pride of the Tribe Hurley. The highlights that stand out in my mind in the 1989 season would probably be the coming of a pitching staff. Uh, we came together a little bit in 1988, but I think we came into our own in 1989 as far as the starting rotation, and we also had a, a fairly decent bullpen. I know as far as myself and, and the rest of the starting staff, uh, we lived above our expectations. We didn't expect to to do as well as we have and, and stay in there for the whole season, but we have. And I think, you know, a lot of people say it, it hadn't, there hadn't been a pitching staff like we had here in a long time, and I think that's something to be proud of. Something else to be proud of in 1989 was some very memorable moments on the field. Let's reminisce a little. High drive, center field, well hit, going back his bucket at the fence. He can't get this one out.
and it's gone. Home run, Joe Carter. Here's a high drive to deep left. It's gonna go. It is gone. Another home run for Joe Carter. Long drive, left field. That could be. There it goes. It's gone. Joe Carter's in his third home run of the game. Two outs. Here's Cal Ripken, and he belts one to deep center field. Back goes Comments to the wall. Leads and caught it. And Comments goes over the wall with the ball. What a play. Two strike pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three, the game's over. John Farrell shuts out Milwaukee, 5-0. John's first major league shutout. As I look back uh, on the 89 season, I think uh, probably two games uh, that I was directly involved with have to stand out of my mind. One was early in May when uh, I had the near no-hitter. I uh, took the no-hitter into the ninth inning, but uh, unfortunately came up a little bit short. But to go out uh, for the ninth inning with the opportunity to, to make history and be in the record books is really a thrill for me. And that game was a thrill for all of us. It certainly is no secret that the strength of the Indians, the reason the drive was just a game and a half back in early August, the closest the drive has been that late in the season since 1974, was the pitching and defense. And the reason we couldn't hold on the remainder of the season was the lack of consistency on offense. As we look forward to the 1990 campaign, this upcoming offseason will be filled with activity. The search is on for the hitters that will give us better balance, leading to an increased run production. The kind of offensive player who enjoys getting dirty, playing an aggressive brand of baseball. Joel Skinner speaks candidly on the 1989 offense. In 1990, I feel that you know, the team definitely needs to improve our offense. We've struggled this year scoring runs, and, and like I mentioned before, the pitching staff's been so good at keeping us in ball games, and we just haven't had the opportunity offensively to, to cash in on some of the pitching rewards, and uh, it's something that you look towards the future as is improving, improving on. Rookie Joey Bell likes what he sees. I expect to see a, a pennant contending team. Um, you know, a lot of people have a tendency to get down on, on Cleveland because of the past. But, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, to bigger, a bigger and better season from, you know, each and every player. Um, hopefully we can, um, you know, do the things in the offseason that will help us to um, – you know, be a better ball club and, and uh, win, you know, a lot more games and hopefully be in a pennant race again. John Farrell feels we are not that far away. I think, uh, you know, if a couple adjustments are made to this ball club we have here currently, uh, there's no telling uh, what can happen in 1990. I know that's been said probably every year going into the next year, but I think uh, this team more than any other, we've got the foundation of what it really takes, and that's the pitching and defense so far. And, just a little bit more consistency through our offense, and I think we really do have a good ball club here. The Candyman also likes what he sees. There's some younger players coming up. Uh, Bo Ald Allred, who looks uh, looks very good to me. Uh, Joey Bell, who's who's learning here at a major league level, which is really tough to do, and he's he's holding his own very well. So all in all, I think that uh, the tribe is really not that far away. Uh, you know, everyone knows that we've had uh, we've had trouble scoring runs this year, but. Uh, uh, Hopefully we can we can learn how to uh, hit behind runners and, and not count on the long ball as uh, uh, next year as, as we have the last two years and uh, you know the whole key with uh, with baseball I think is putting pressure on the pitcher I know I don't like it when guys get on base and and want to steal and want to hit and run and want to want to bunt and stuff and uh, that's what I don't see this team doing and hopefully in uh, 1990 guys will make the adjustments and learn how to do that. Pop up the center field. Joe Carter coming on. Corey Stein is coming over. It's Joe Carter. The game is over. Indians win it five to four. Here's the one-one pitch. Swing and a line drive down the right field side. In there for a base hit. Snyder quickly on the ball. Gallagher headed for two. Good throw by Corey. Wide, but the tag is there anyway. Got him. Cleveland Indians' main goal is to acquire the type of player who can do that. Play an aggressive style of baseball offensively get that kind of offensive support that not only our pitching staff deserves, but you deserve. Because after all, you are the reason the game is played. Catcher Joel Skinner speaks out about you, the fans. I think Cleveland has great fans. Uh, 
people come out and they support the team. Uh, the attendance isn't as high as it is in other cities, but I, to be honest with you, I feel that uh, the better the product is on the field, the, the better support you get. I, I don't believe in people having to come out just because you you go and you, you put your uniform and you go on the field. I think that people support winners, and uh, and I think the more the team wins, the more people that will come out and see us play. Uh, it's like that in any, any business. Uh, the better you are and the better your product is, the more support you're going to get or the more sales you're going to get. Just That's just basic American finance and, and the, the American way. And uh, and I think that the Cleveland fans are great baseball fans. They're, they're very knowledgeable. And, uh, and I've come from a couple cities where they feel that they're the best fans in the world. And I think Cleveland compares with them. That's Chicago and New York. Uh, people come out, they want to see a winner, and they want to see a good product. And I think that the better the product is on the field, the more people are going to have in the seats. Ed O'Brien knows how important you are. Well, I think the Indian fans are uh, are great. I, I really do. I think that uh, they're uh, in need of a winner. Um, I think they've supported this ball club well, and uh, you know, I know that uh, the, you know the, the numbers may not speak that, but uh, you know, you need to go out and play and 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 give them something to come out and cheer about, and and that's the bottom line. And, and there's uh, there's nothing uh, that'll bring them out other than the winning ball club, and and that's uh, basically what we have to worry about as, as far as going. In the 1990s, you you have your nucleus in the, on a baseball team like you do in the in the stands, and and you get a good support group uh, of season ticket holders that uh, that come out and are, uh, and patronize you every night. I think is uh, is very beneficial uh, to the group as a whole. And and the more numbers we can get out there and and uh, and bring to the ballpark, uh, I just think it's going to add a little better. Uh, feeling to the atmosphere uh, each and every time we go out on the field. John Farrell knows firsthand about that special feeling when the park is packed. There were times when you'd look up in this big ballpark and you'd see the crowds and uh, you'd just have the envision of what it would be like in late September when we are in a pennant race and you can see crowds of 50, 60, 70,000 and just get the feeling of what it really could be here. I know uh, there was a game uh, that I pitched against Milwaukee was a 5 nothing shutout. And, uh, I can remember just taking a few moments with two outs in the ninth and I backed off the mound, uh, you know, and there was about 48,000 people here and just getting an idea and a feeling for what they were going through at the time. I can remember they were all on their feet and I just happened to scan the upper deck and just uh, take it all in. I think that's what the game of baseball is all about is the moments when, you know, things are going your way and you can really kind of enjoy and take in the full feeling of what the, those moments at the top are all about. Lefty Bud Black sums it up the best. As far as Indian fans go, I know that uh, this is only my first year here. Uh, I know it's been a long time since uh, the Indians have had uh, a, a, a championship team. Somebody have said 30 years, 35 years, 40 years, whatever it is, it's, it's too long. It's too long of a time. I mean, it's about time that we as players start playing and winning some baseball games. I know it's frustrating uh, for the city to, to see the Indians down for such a long period of time, but uh, the only thing I can really say is bear with us, hang in there. Uh, we're trying, and hopefully uh, with the players we got here in the management that we can do a few things next year to, to make a run for it. There's nothing like one single tribe at home When you're part of the team You're so glad you came Every crack of the bat Every single throw Every strike and ball Is never the same We're coming for the action Coming for the fun We're bringing the whole family To the stadium There's no place Come and see the tribe There's no place Watch them come Every time you come, they keep the 